Thank you for attending this masterclass in change management. I sincerely hope that you will find it beneficial and, at the end of this course feel confident to implement the strategies we will teach you in this program. My guess is that you would want to know what the course entails. With this in mind let us look at the contents of the course. First you need to be able to motivate why change it good for business. Then understand how to deploy the process. And then to plan, design and implement the relevant change interventions. So in the next section we will start with the business case. Modern organizations are very complex and operate in a very competitive environment. To be sustainable they need to innovate and change on an ongoing basis. Classically organizations focus mainly on research, marketing, sales, production and logistics. Although still very relevant, the nature, location and deployment of the classical supply chain has changed dramatically. And with this, organizations are constantly busy to implement new strategies, processes, systems etc. With this there is a constant need to get people ready, willing and able to operate effectively in these new environments. With this in mind it is important to realize that all change interventions aim at integrating the three most basic elements of the organization. These are Technology, in its most basic form thus technique Processes And lastly but probably the most important People's capabilities, motivation and behavior By achieving this any change intervention is at least in an organizational sense also a business solution, and provide the rationale to, to embark on a meaningful change process. Let us assume for a moment that our organization wants to change from a manual to electronic bookkeeping system. To implement this change we need to buy a new system and software, technology, operate in terms of the general prescriptions of the system, process and ensure that people are trained in the use of the system and software. Further that any uncertainty and apprehension in using the system is addressed properly. Classically management and specialists motivate such changes against the background of return on investment, payback period and internal rates of return. For the normal user of the system this is often confusing and they do not understand why they need to deviate from the proverbial tried and tested methods. And it here where the first important task for the change specialist reside, creating, in practical terms why there is a case for the change. Let us look at how we build a case for change. Essentially we need to show a causal link between four elements related to the change. In the first place the rationale or why. Then a brief overview of what will change. Then how the change project will be approached, and lastly, a practical and point-by-point -point overview of the benefits it holds for the business and the affected groups. What is important to remember is that your business case is not a technical document. It needs to be concise, but not vague. It should not only take into account language preferences, but also the level at which the target groups are functioning. And it should preferably stay clear of technical jargon or discipline-specific language. Maybe the quote from the French philosopher Blaise Pascal describes the need for brevity the best. If I had more time, I would have written a shorter letter. It is proposed that the case for change, to be communicated to affected groups should not exceed one A4 page. It is indeed the so-called elevator speech and we provide you with a tool to develop this in the resources section of the course. This concludes the introductory module of the course. In the next module we will provide you with insight and tools regarding the frameworks and processes for change. Thank you.